We're going to begin tonight with President Biden's first address to a joint session of Congress and the ambitious plan he'll lay out this evening to move the country from what he calls peril into possibility and setback into strength. 25 years after Bill Clinton declared that the era of big government is over, President Biden will argue the opposite, saying that, quote, government still works and can deliver for the people as he attempts to sell trillions of dollars in new federal spending on everything from universal pre-K and free community college to elder care and infrastructure. And tonight's address is expected to outline Mr. Biden's vision of a country emerging from the pandemic, even as he speaks to masked lawmakers sitting in a nearly empty empty. House chamber due to ongoing COVID restrictions. Mr. Biden acknowledged today he'll need the support of Americans as well as Republican lawmakers to get his agenda passed. And tonight, GOP leaders say that's not going to happen, labeling his plans as, quote, Washington schemes and socialist dreams. Well, there's a lot at stake tonight, and CBS's Ed O'Keefe is going to lead off our coverage from the White House. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Nora. Sources tell me the president's well aware of the stakes tonight. After all, he spent eight years seated behind a president who used to give these kinds of remarks. They say he spent much of the past week writing, rewriting, and rehearsing a speech set to focus on the pandemic, the economic recovery, and restoring faith in democracy. He will tell the country, quote, America is on the move again. President Biden travels to the heavily fortified Capitol tonight for the biggest speech of his nearly 100 days in office. The big items on his agenda, touting the progress in fighting the pandemic, the rebounding economy, and nearly $4 trillion in proposed new spending. He calls it a blue-collar blueprint to build America that will create millions of jobs and trillions of dollars in economic growth. And he says that 90% of the jobs created by his infrastructure plans don't require a college degree. Mr. Biden is calling for free government-backed pre-kindergarten and community college, child tax credits, a new national paid family and medical leave program, and hundreds of billions of dollars to rebuild roads, bridges, airports, electrical grids, and water lines. Government can work. Democracy can work. Now's the time to be bold. The president would pay for the plans with new taxes on the wealthy and corporations, and beefed up funding for the IRS to catch tax cheats. Republicans aren't impressed. I hope, although do not really expect that he will move away from the policies and partisan priorities of the far left. And the president's unlikely to commit to some big liberal priorities. Nobody knows better than President Biden that uh, proposing legislation is only a first step. Thanks to COVID, there will be only about 200 invited guests, down from the usual nearly 1,600. The first lady and second gentleman will be there, but without the usual guests. Plus only two members of the cabinet and one Supreme Court justice. Madam Speaker! The first African-American House Sergeant-at-Arms, William Walker, will escort the president, while South Carolina's Tim Scott, the Senate's only black Republican, will give the GOP response. And for the first time, two women will be seated behind the president, Vice President Harris and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. It's pretty exciting, uh, and it's all wonderful to make history. It's about time. Lots of other issues on the agenda tonight. Sources tell CBS News he's expected to endorse bipartisan talks on police reform, renew his call to ban assault weapons, and commit to revamping the nation's immigration system. But in the meantime, he'll call on lawmakers to pass bills giving legal status to guest workers and so-called dreamers. Nora? Ed O'Keefe, thank you.